Okay, now that we saved our like template, our selection for the cylinder shape, let's draw the cylinder. <clears throat> First of all, let's look at some references here. Uh, this is from a very old uh, airbrush book. <clears throat> it's not that great, but it can show you that if the light is coming from the upper left, the, uh, the darkest area is going to be like right here. And there's always maintain some reflected light. It's a very simple little diagram here, but it does show the brightest brightest areas here, dark, and we re preserve some reflected light. Here isn't this isn't very good either, but it's come from the other direction. Um, but you can again see the darkest area, and like this back edge is not the darkest area. The darkest area resides in here. So let's go back to our file. Here we are again. We saved our selection, so go select load selection. The first thing we're going to do is our cylinder body. Click OK. Come over here. Um, make sure you're on <clears throat> a different layer. I'm going to turn off the eyeball on the background layer. So let's call this, <clears throat> this is going to be the white background for the cylinder, just like we do for the sphere. You can call it white, but just to make it more clear, I'm going to go CYL, white, cylinder white. With the paint bucket tool, this is old news now. Uh, I'm not going to go over every little thing anymore. Um, fill that with white. Okay, cool. So we have the cylinder white layer. Make a new layer. And uh, let's call it cylinder paint. Okay. Hit the letter B on the keyboard for brush tool or activate the brush tool. Eventually it's not, where is my brush tool? <clears throat> for some reason, folks, my, there it goes. It took a while. Photoshop was very sleepy. Okay, so um, black paint in the foreground. Big brush, I'm gonna use the same opacity and flow settings I used for the uh, cylinder. So um, I got opacity at 18, flow at 10. My brush size is 600 on this 240 DPI 2000 by 2000 document. And just to review, let's make sure what we're doing here. Okay. So first I'm going to make a nice gray Um, left and right, this like nice gray tone here. My light, in my imagination, is coming from the upper left. So this area, I'm not painting right now, I'm just indicating. This area right here is going to be the brightest. This area is going to be the darkest. So let me go back to my brush tool. And this one, you got to, I'm using the bracket keys to make us a, a thinner or a smaller brush okay and that's looking pretty good already right so I'm going to develop this um, increase the brush size to gray that in a little bit again I don't want to like screw up this back end here I don't want to make this super dark I want to preserve some light here and this is just going to be a little bit darker so let me work this in some more here. The um, again, I'm probably going to get confused talking and doing this at the same time. But the sphere I did, I I kind I went darker than I typically would. <clears throat> so I might have to lighten up the sphere or to or darken this guy a lot more to get the composition to work together. Because remember this. What we're going to do here is have three shapes in one file, in one, uh, you know, one back, one coherent composition. So if I got a super, super dark sphere and a really light cylinder, that's not going to work, right? So I got to like, after I put all three elements together, you know, I'm going to do some fine tuning of this. Uh, but this looks pretty good as it is here. So, I should probably quit while I'm ahead. Um, 
I, I think that's that's gonna work I think this this I might have made just a little bit too dark so I could use the eraser tool and set the eraser float and opacity down or I could just simply with this since I'm on a different layer I can um, I'm using white paint I didn't change the flow or opacity I just I just did two strokes of white paint across there to, to brighten it up a little bit and I can go back and forth between black and white you know to, to get what I want that looks pretty good I think so uh, now we got to make a cylinder top right and let's review our uh, abstract little diagram here the way this illustrator interpreted um, the light is like he just or she just used a little some black strokes going across here and left this far edge very bright so this the light is coming from the upper left the way this illustrator interpreted it is to leave this far edge bright on the top so let's do the same thing Go to select, load selection, choose cylinder top. Let's, um, I could fill this with white and start all over again, but I, I kind of like the effects I get with leaving it. Um, cause I, so I'm going to use black and white both on this one. So anyway, I want this like brighter and I want this darker. So first I'm going to, and I'm, sweeping in this kind of like a 60 degree what is that 60 degree or 30 degree that's 60 degree motion so I'm going to darken this up white paint and I'm going to brighten this up over here um, I kind of like the textures I get in there with the just painting over it but you got to be careful that it doesn't look like a hollow tube okay I'm going to go back to black and that's looking pretty cool. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. Um, Command D. Again, um, I'm going to have to fine tune this. And I don't want to make a video of me babbling incoherently because you're, I don't want to, you're probably bored enough as it is uh, with hearing my voice. Okay, so. That, that looks pretty good. All right. That's that. Come over to your layers palette. Hold down the shift key. So cylinder paint. I don't know why I put paint BBB there. I have absolutely no idea. But um, the two layers are selected. Hit the little group icon, which looks like a folder. It's going to call it group one again. Name it cylinder. And uh, life is good.